If you have a spare cable or cord, you can easily avoid picking up stitches altogether. So instead of starting your row the regular way, you take your cord or cable and go in from below, wrap it around the cord and then you knit across the regular way. And in the next row, you do the exact same thing. You turn around, take your cable, dive in from below, wrap it around the cord and continue knitting. And if you do this in every right side row, you end up with this handy line of stitches here right on your cord and then you can simply attach a spare needle tip to one end, slide these stitches right to the knitting needle and simply knit across. Isn't this ingenious? But what if I told you that this is both the smartest and the worst knitting tip I'm going to show you in this video? Let me explain. So any advanced knitter who has ever picked up stitches for the neckline of a sweater, the gusset of some socks or the thumb of some mittens will be able to attest that the real challenge is not the actual act of picking up stitches. That's annoying, but easy enough. The problem is creating a transition that is invisible, does not pucker and has no holes or gaps. So I thought I'd compile a video that starts with the basics for beginners, but does not leave out all these smart little tips and tricks for neither results. Let me show you how I pick up stitches. Before we can start picking up stitches, we need to prepare our edge. Uh, most tutorials and books agree that a simple slip stitch border is by far the easiest way to pick up stitches from. So when knitting stock knit stitch, like in this case, you simply slip the first stitch of every right side row, point to point or purlwise with yarn here held in the back, and then you continue continue knitting across. This slip stitch border is super simple because here for the last stitch you don't need to pay attention, you simply knit that as well. Then you turn around and here for every wrong side row you do a very similar thing. You slip the stitch purlwise or point to point but this time with yarn held in front and then you continue purling across. So uh, that is super, super simple. And here the very last stitch, you purl that as well. No need to pay attention. And then here on the right side again, slip pearl, uh, pearlwise with yarn held in back before you continue knitting. And you do that in every single row. And if you do this in every row, this here will be the result, a nice and neat selvage. One quick note here, if you're knitting garter stitch and you want to achieve the same edge, you need to slip the first stitch of every row pearlwise, but with yarn held in front. Pearlwise with yarn held in front. So the slip stitch, uh, slip stitch selvage repeat uh, will be different depending on your knitting stitch pattern and you cannot simply do the exact same uh, thing if you switch the pattern. So here again, first a stitch you slip with yarn held in front. Next we can already start picking up our stitches and the slip stitch selvage creates this well line of V's here and underneath each little V is a little well almost eyelet. And we can use these eyelets to pick up our stitches. So take your knitting needle and go underneath both legs of that stitch and simply scoop the yarn through. Then go through the next little well, eyelet and scoop the yarn through. Go below the next and in that manner uh, pick up stitches along the edge. Now admittedly this can be a little bit fiddly. So you can always pick up a crochet hook and do the same. So go underneath both legs of that stitch, pull the yarn through 
and slip it to your knitting needle. Go underneath both legs here, pull the yarn through and slip it to your knitting needle. Be careful when you do it with a crochet hook like this. Uh, it's easy for your stitches to end up twisted. So always make sure that the leading leg, this leg here is in front. If it's twisted, I mean, you can always fix things later on, but uh, you know, I want to show you the right way to do this. So one last time, dive through the eyelet, grab the yarn and slip it to your knitting needle. One little note here, if you are picking up stitches from such a flat object and not in the round or so, uh, it really, I, it typically looks neater if you pick up one stitch here from uh, the edge. So, or through the very last stitch here and the same here on the um, other side. So here there's this cast on stitch and it's typically a little bit tighter but um, you can pick up one additional stitch from there and that, well, prevents uh, your edges from, I don't know, uh, otherwise you won't end up with a straight line. Once you're done picking up stitches, you may consider tightening up that row a bit. So use your knitting needle and go into each little stitch and carry any slack you might have added to your pickup row over to the side and remove it. And of course, um, if it's flat, do the same here on this side as well. And then you can simply knit across in pattern. So that doesn't matter, it could be ribbing, it could be garter stitch, it could be whatever. So from here you on, you just continue knitting across in pattern. A couple of rows later, this will be the result. So you end up with, well, almost like a little step here. This will be the wrong side where you can clearly see the slip stitch selvage. Quite a neat transition. Now these were, as you can see, the basics. Now we need to talk about all these fine little details that might matter to an experienced knitter. Now, first of all, you might notice that your slip stitch selvage is a little bit looser on one side than the other side. If you want to know why this is happening and what you can do to prevent this, I'll link you to my video on um, that explains this difference in greater detail. But here in this case, I rather want to focus on the actual picking up stitches. So I told you to go below both stitches and then grab the yarn. But is this really the only way to do it? Let's check it out. So instead of going underneath both legs of that V, we can just pick up the stitch here through the outer leg. So here is the inner one, the one closer to you, and this one is a little bit farther away. And we can also pick up stitch by going just through that part of the stitch. So as you can see, this is just as easy, maybe even a little bit easier. And I'll show you the results in a second. A couple of rows later, this is the result. As you can see, the step is much shallower. Here, this is the wrong side where you don't get to see this slip stitch selvage anymore. Here, by comparison here, this was the wrong side of the other side where you really clearly had this line of Vs and here with a much, well, more pronounced step. I will, however, say that this way to pick up stitches is a little bit more prone to creating holes. So if you stretch this out here, you might be able to see uh, through a little bit here with this version. If I stretch things out, the, the holes are a little bit 
tighter if you ask me. Now let's take this process one step further. So I want you to pick up a knitting needle that is quite a bit smaller than the ones you've uh, knitted with so far. And then you just pick up these outer legs using this knitting needle. Just slip them to your small knitting needle one by one. Just the outer legs as you can see. Every single one, don't skip one and go all the way across like so. Again, you might also elect to slip on that first cast on and bind of stitch here to your knitting needle for a smoother edge. And then you pick up your yarn and your regular knitting needle and now you knit across but this time you knit across by going through the back loop of all these stitches. Go through the back loop instead of knitting through the front. And this will, of course, twist all these little loops. And I'll show you the results in a second because it may help to prevent little holes. As an alternative, you can also do this with a crochet hook. So you get into the leg here from behind, grab the yarn, pull through and slip that to your knitting needle. Go in from behind, grab the yarn and slip that to your knitting needle. So it's the exact same uh, concept but you do it in one breath rather than in two steps. It kind of depends on your preferences really. Either method is fine. So a couple of rows later, this will be the result and I feel this is quite pretty because, so here you have these fully uh, horizontal these, then you have this slight little slant all and then the fully vertical these. So it's almost like a progression towards the other side. Whereas here you have a kind of stark contrast. You might also see that the resulting ridge is even smoother and it's even more pronounced here on the other side. So here this ridge appears to be almost flat, whereas here you still have a kind of, well, not ridge, not well, but there is a step, see? See the difference? And the holes you create here, let's stretch this out, are also, a, well, I mean, it's still visible, but compared to here, where you have almost these eyelets here, see? So, this is quite the smart option if you ask me. Earlier I showed you how to work in a spare cord to avoid picking up stitches entirely. So let's do that again a little bit slower. So I'm here in my first right side row and I simply go in from below and wrap the yarn around the cord like so. And then I simply knit across. Simply knit across. And then in the next row, or next right side row rather, I do the exact same thing. So I turn around, come in from below, and wrap the yarn around. And by the third time you do this, Things should be fairly stable. The first two times are a bit fiddly and then here these two stitches already stabilize the cord and then you dive in from below, wrap it around and knit across. Just one note here, you can also wrap around the other way. So like this, coming in from above. However, then you will end up with twisted stitches where the leading leg is in the back. However, if you want twisted stitches, then of course this makes it easier. So go in from the top. And here's another small little note. When it comes to binding off, you do the exact same thing. You wrap it around, 
knit two stitches and then pass over. So your bind off also knits one row of stitches in the same breath. So of course you would want to add another wrap there. Once you're done, you simply attach a needle tip to one side, slide these stitches to your knitting needle and simply knit across. You can, by the way, also weave in the tail as you go. You don't have to, but you can do that. We'll add a little bit more durability to those first stitches and then simply knit across in pattern uh, in this case, I'll do stock and knit stitch. So a couple of rows later, this will be the result also very pretty. And in fact, if you compare the two, uh, compared with the previous method I showed you, it's a very, very similar edge. However, if you look closely, you might see that here, the immediate edge here, well, it has a lot more stitches because we didn't add a slip stitch here and I do feel slip stitches do look a little bit more balanced than this will almost knotted edge. But that is in fact not my only issue with this technique. Let's take a look. So first of all, depending on the circumference of your cord, you will add a little bit more slack to these stitches. So as you wrap around, you are adding that much yarn to your edge. Instead, you can also pick up the same loops later on. So using a thin knitting needle, you can pick up these loops. See these? Well, it almost looks like a little snail here. You can pick up these loops later on and it will be quite a bit tight. I mean, a little bit more annoying, obviously, but uh, it will be the exact same result. So uh, setting that aside, why am I still so opposed to this idea? Let's take a look. So here's the deal. If you take a look at any swatch and any knitting stitch pattern except garter stitch, you will notice that your row gauge differs from your stitch gauge. So in this case, I will need 10 stitches to cover five centimeters, but I will need 14 rows to cover the same five centimeters vertically with a slip stitch salvage or with this cord method, you can only pick up one stitch for every two rows that you've knitted. That's your limit. You can pick up less, but you can't pick up more. And the problem is as I knit across my gauge, except I change my knitting needle, my gauge won't change. My, I will still need 10 stitches to cover five centimeters. However, this edge here is much wider than that. So in, essentially I am messing up my gauge and you can clearly see this here in our previous swatch where this portion here is much wider and the edge is kind of constricted and draws everything together. Now the cord method or the slip stitch method is fine if you want to knit a gusset because you want to get narrower here anyway. And if you knit a reinforced heel, then your row gauge will be much closer to your stitch gauge anyway. So the effect will be even less pronounced. But if you want to add a border to a shawl or a blanket, well, you typically don't want your edge to be tighter than the center. As a result, I typically avoid knitting any kind of selvage and simply knit across. So this is just plain stock and stitch all across. The edge will appear to be almost knotted or so. So it doesn't look all that nice. But since we pick up stitches from it anyways, no one is going to see later on. So it doesn't matter if you ask me. However, this edge here has so many more little holes and loops where you can pick up stitches from. So you can easily match your gauge and it's very, very easy to calculate that. So my row gauge was um, 10 stitches and I simply divide that by uh, my row gauge, uh, which was 14 uh, rows and that's roughly 0 0.7 stitches per row. And uh, then I simply multiply that times 10 rows and the result will be seven stitches. So 
This means what we just calculated here. For every, for every 10 rows of my edge, I will have to pick up seven stitches. It's that simple. Simply divide the stitch gauge uh, by the row gauge and multiply it by 10. And then you know how many stitches you need to pick up for every 10 rows. So, so this means when it comes to picking up stitches, I simply skip every third stitch in my case. Typically for stockinette stitch that works out for most people. So here this loop I'm going to skip and then I'm going to pick up another two stitches and skip the third. See, I go below both uh, legs here, but just like before, you could uh, go um, just through one part of the loop. So this one here we are going to skip and then here through this. So I could also just pick up here from the outer leg. However, that is often a little bit fiddly because this outer leg here, this outer leg often is a little bit almost like a knot. So it's a bit harder to pull anything through. Like so, it does work if you have a um, sharp crochet hook, then I'm going to skip one and then I'm going to pick up here this again. You could even do it through the back loop like I showed you before. Uh, so, the difference, so the way to pick up stitches doesn't actually change. It's just the edge that changed and the frequency. But other than that, you could pick up any way you like. And if I knit across a couple of rows, you will see that the edge or it will be the exact same edge depending on which part of the stitch you go through. The difference lies in the fact that here you made your gauge and this swatch here and this edge is perfectly square, whereas here it kind of tapers out. The only exception to this rule is garter stitch because garter stitch has what most people will call a square gauge. Strictly speaking, that is wrong. However, this enables you to use the cord method. Instead, you can also pick things up manually. So if you take a close look at your edge, there's always this one bump that is a little bit below and you can just pick that up. So go through these, well, some call it the bottom bump. Just go through these bottom bumps and pick them up one by one. And then just like before, you simply knit across. And because your gauge, so in garter stitch, the uh, row gauge will always be half, uh, twice as big as the stitch gauge. So in garter stitch, for a square shape, you need to cast on 10 stitches and knit across 20 rows, and this will result in a square. So, and that's typically the, the case. So that's why you don't need to do any math here. And then a couple of rows later, this will be the result. Also, I feel a very, very neat, seamless and in pattern transition. This here is the wrong side, a little bit of a ridge, of course, but the right side here is very, very neat, don't you think? And of course, as you can see, it doesn't pucker, it doesn't draw the edge together. Uh, it's nice and square. Before I go on and show you how to pick up stitches horizontally, here's an important reminder. I feel that this tutorial goes way beyond anything you will typically find on YouTube. There are even expensive paid courses out there that show you less details. So if you enjoy my work, consider supporting me on Patreon. Even if it's just a month, because you can cancel any time. Think of it as an honesty box. I'll add the link to the description below. Help me creating more free tutorials like this one here for everyone. So far we only picked up stitches from the side. Sometimes, however, you also need to pick up stitches from your bind off edge. The neckline of a bottom up sweater comes to mind. So how do you do that? So if you take a look at our edge, here is the bind of edge and right below the edge there is a row of stitches and each stitch has, well, it looks like a V and we can pick up stitches right through that. 
You could also pick up stitches by going through that part of the stitch. However, then this little edge would be visible and that's probably not what you want. So the first V is often a little bit here hidden in the edge is a little bit difficult to see the others should be easy. I am using a crochet hook here again you don't need to use a crochet and then here below this is the next little V grab that yarn and slip it to our knitting needle then here find the next V grab the yarn and slip it to the knitting needle next V all the way across again you can also try to do it with only your knitting needle also possible might be even faster it helps if you kind of scrape the yarn across your uh, what is this middle finger like so but it really doesn't matter if you prefer the crochet hook and find it easier well then do that and then here four rows later this will be the result isn't this transition neat and nice you can faintly see it but that's about it here on the wrong side of course you end up with a little ridge sometimes things are upside down and you don't need to pick up stitches here from your bind off edge but rather here from your cast on edge top down sweaters come to mind but also mittens or gloves i'm specifically mentioning this here because there's one small little detail you need to pay attention to here is my cast on edge and here you can see there is a nice and neat row of v's here right above the cast on edge now let's pierce one of these V's here. I'm going to pierce one of these V's here with my knitting needle. And if I turn things upside down, turn things upside down, watch closely, watch closely. Here, I'm no longer piercing a V. The V is one leg to the side here, but not here anymore. But of course you want to knit in this direction. So again, you need to pick up stitches from the V's, but you need to pick up stitches uh, from the V's as seen from this direction upside down. So let's take a look at this watch where I bridged some stitches here mid row using a knitted cast on to join things in the round. I don't know, a project like uh, gloves come to mind or so. And I cast on three additional stitches. So here's one stitch, here's one stitch, and here's one stitch. So you end up with these three columns of knit stitches. These here are already here connected to the edges. If we turn things around, then you have this stitch here and this stitch here but the outer stitches this one here and this one here they are already connected to the edges so because they are offset by one stitch you would have to pick up four stitches let's show you how to do that so even though I only cast on three stitches I will actually pick up four stitches from that edge because if I go through the original V's my transition would not be invisible or smooth then I would also be offset one stitch so in this case imagine I am knitting uh, gloves here and I'm bridging the gap of some fingers or so or some tabby socks some Japanese tabby socks this is the way I would uh, pick up the stitches and then knit across. See what a nice and seamless transition that is. Now imagine that would be uh, the gap between two fingers if you're knitting gloves or so or mittens the transition towards the thumb. Then this method is just 
perfect. Just remember you picked up four stitches, one more than you cast on and you might have to decrease that a little bit further up or account for it, you know, when you comes to the to uh, desired circumference. Sometimes, however, the edge you need to pick up stitches from isn't straight like that. The neckline of a sweater comes to mind. So in this case, you can still do it the exact same way. So you pick up stitches here through the Vs. However, uh, you can definitely skip a, a row. So I'm picking up two stitches here on that level. And then I move down one row. And, I, and from here on, I move down one row with every stitch that I pick up, like so. Kind of trying to um, replicate a neckline here. And in theory, this works rather well. So as you can see, we can also do it like that. In theory, this works rather well. So I knitted across a couple of rows here in a rib stitch pattern. And as you can see, the transition is fairly nice and neat here. I mean, the wrong side looks a bit weird because I didn't ha have a cutout here, but still this is nice and, nice and neat. But often when you actually try this on a sweater, it doesn't look all that neat anymore. And you end up with weird little stitches and holes here, often because these can be short row stitches or bind off stitches, and then you need to skip more than one row. So what can we do? If you are not satisfied with the way your neckline looks, you can use a crochet hook and create a um, base of chain stitches where you pick up stitches from. So let's show you how to do that. So basically, I mean, even if you don't know how to crochet, this will be very, very easy. So you just crochet a base of chain stitches. Now be careful that you don't mess up your uh, gauge. This will require a bit of error and trial because of course crochet has a different gauge than knitting. It also behaves differently so it will not be as stretchy. Of course, if it's a neckline, that's typically actually what you, you want. I mean, you don't want to constrict your neck, but you don't want, because what often happens is that the neckline wears out and that's also not what you want. Um, so um, that's what you would do. You would just crochet here a chain of chain stitches. Okay, so this here will be the result. And then you pick up a very small knitting needle and you slip that last stitch here, that last loop back to your knitting needle. And then you need to pick up stitches here. And between here, so each chain stitch has two sides and between there is a little strand and we need to pick up that strand. So we don't want the legs of the either leg or side of the chain stitch, but we want what's in between. This can be a bit fiddly. I mean, after all, because there are other stitches below. So go slowly and maybe bring it a little bit closer to your face and go all the way around. Come on, there you go. So all the way around. And then you knit, can knit across. So in this case, I'm knitting flat. So I actually need to start here on the, oops, on the wrong side. If you're doing this in the round, like you usually would when you knit a sweater or so, uh, you don't need to do this on the wrong side. Go slowly, this first round will be very tight because these um, little chain stitches or the strand between the chain stitches isn't all that generous and sometimes you pick them up the wrong way. So go slowly and knit across. This 
So here this will be the result. As you can see, this is visible. This is visible, very visible, but I feel in a decorative way. And for a neckline or so, it has this, uh, this row of chain stitches has the added benefit that it hides. It doesn't only, I mean, it creates more structure for your neckline, so it doesn't wear out. But on top of that, it also hides any little inconsistencies from your bind of stitches, from your short row stitches or whatever else is underneath. So I do feel this is such a valid technique and one you definitely, or an advanced Knitter definitely should keep in their toolbox. There's one last option I want to show you that or is fairly similar but needs a bit more preparation. So I have a super small diameter tube here. Imagine that I don't know I'm knitting some toys or so and then if I want to pick up stitches here in the middle of the tube, I'd run into a problem because, well, I mean, imagine this tube was any longer and then I go through one of the V's here. So, well, maybe the first stitch I can make work, but then the second, I don't know, probably would be impossible or very, very frustrating. So that's why I inserted this row of purl stitches here. So uh, this is plain stockinette stitch and then I just purled across one row. So here's what I do. I use some very fine knitting needles and then I always pick up the top purl bumps coming in from above. Now, of course, you will have to join in new DPNs as you pick up stitches or you use circulars, whatever you prefer. And then just pick up all the, here's the last here, all the top pearl bumps here in that round. And then you can simply knit across. So as you can see, I'm knitting upside down. So in that direction, so the pearl bumps vanish. So um, that's, if you knit in the other direction, it will be slightly visible. But if you knit in that direction, so um, here's uh, the right, correct size knitting needle. And then you just knit across. So here below are the bottom pearl bumps. So I turn things upside down and knit in that direction. And if you knit across a couple of more rows, this will be the result. Also a very, very nice transition here on the wrong side as well. Very seamless, very nice. And in case you were wondering, well, how and what do I need this for? Here, this is one of the mushrooms that I've knitted in here to attach the wheel to the stalk. I used the exact same technique. So you can definitely, there are so, so many fun applications of this trick. Anyway, that was my little masterclass on how to pick up stitches in knitting. Comment below if you have any questions, but please, please, please do consider to knit a swatch uh, yourself. There are so, so many different knitting stitch patterns. Ribbing, moss stitch, siege stitch, broken rib stitch, chevron stitch, and so on. And I can't know the best way to pick up stitches for each and every one of them. So consider knitting a swatch and trying it out yourself because basically that's what I would have to do myself. I can't know it all either. Anyway, happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.